Welcome to the Fish North Georgia podcast, where we talk everything fishing here in North Georgia. Make a cast over that brush pot and bring wolf packs of spotted bass up. Georgia is blessed with so many of these electric only lakes. No, I didn't say that, Danny. Don't, okay, don't be so, speculating uh, now. So hey guys, this is Danny with Fish North Georgia and the Fish North Georgia podcast. And today, this is one of our mini casts. We're here with Henry Cowan. And Henry is going to tell us how do we get started fly fishing on Lake Lanier. Okay, so real briefly, here's what you need to know. It's a need to know thing. So what kind of rods we use? So the rods we use for fly fishing linear for spotted bass and stripers, an eight weight is the right rod. You can go nine, you can go seven, but an eight weight rod is the right rod. You need a reel that's gonna hold 150 yards of backing and fly line. 200 is fine, it needs to have a decent drag because stripers and spots can pull hard. So you need a reel with a decent drag system. Um, as far as leader goes, you know, a nine, somewhere between seven and nine foot leader. I like to use something between 15 and 20 pound tippet. That's the that's what my fly is being attached to. So that, as you know, there's a lot of wood on Lanier. So mm-hmm. you got to have a fly that at least can drag through. The first time you hook a spot or a striper and he runs, the first thing he does is he tries to go right for the wood. So you're going to have to be able to pull hard and not break that fish off. So that's what you kind of need as far as equipment goes. The most important part of fly fishing on Lanier, and any fly fishing for that matter, is the line. It's not how much you spend on the rod and how much you spend on the reel. It's the fly line. It's the line, okay. The line is the ticket. So what I would say to you is fly rods can go from $100 to $1,000. Reels can go from $100 to $700, $800. Fly lines can go from $20 to $100. Buy the best fly line. Buy the $80, $90, $100 fly line. If you want to go, if it's after that, if you're in a budget, then go with a cheaper rod. Go with a cheaper reel. Absolutely spend the money on a fly line. Good advice. If you're fishing on Lanier, you're going to need two fly lines. There are three types of fly lines, but you're going to need two. Mm -hmm. I say three because we have what's known as a, there are three types of lines. There's floating lines. Those are the ones that stay on the surface. There's what we call intermediate fly lines. Those sink very slowly, one and a half to two inches per second. They sink down. Then we have fast sinking fly lines. Those are the ones we talk that sink six inches per second. I'm on Lanier fishing intermediate, slow sink, and fast sinking lines. I come out with two outfits every time. The only time I bring a floating line is when there's top water season, which is generally in uh, end of April, May, red, during the redfin bite or when they're eating poppers on the points in May right. or possibly in September, early October. Otherwise, from the middle of October until the end of April, I'm on fast sinking lines and slow sinking intermediates. That's what you need to have. As far as flies go, you got to match the hatch. It's really simple. Most of the time, the fly guys, the best time for a fly fisherman on Lanier is October to January. Not that March, April, and May isn't good, but October to January is by far the most productive. And they're usually eating young of the year threadfin shad. So you need flies that are two inches long. We designed a fly called a something else. You can get them at all the local fly shops here. Hammond's Fishing Tackle has them. And that's probably our number one go-to fly for reservoirs that have small threadfin shad. So that's kind of what you need to know to get started as far as the, the tackle and the equipment for both bass and stripers, both. Okay. Um, there's also a fly out there called a Game Changer, and it's a fantastic streamer about that long. Um, it, it imitates a bigger thread fin or a small herring, and it's a segmented, for lack of a better term, let's call it a magic swimmer. It's a Sabeel magic swimmer for the fly angler. Okay, absolutely. All right, and they're called Game Changers, and you can get those. Those are available. You can get them online, or you can get them from any of the local fly shops. We'll have them, too. Those are probably my two go-to flies. Finally, the last one is what we talked about, a Clouser minnow, which is nothing more than a bucktail jig for fly fishermen. That's a really good fly as well. They just don't make them small enough to match the young of the year thread fin when they're one and a half to two inches. They, the smallest one they make is about two and a half, three inches long. So the, the something else is better when they're on the, 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 the small threads and the clouser is better when they're on the big threads or the herring. And the game changer is really good when they're on the big threads in the herring. Okay. And once you've made your cast out, what do you do with your, let's say with the intermediate? You've thrown the intermediate, not the fast sink. Okay. So I make the cast out and now I let it sink four or five seconds. And then it's all about the retrieve. 
And the retrieve, uh, as we, you and I discussed earlier, is it's a strip, 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 and a pause. It, you got to have, oops, you got to have that free fall. Mm -hmm. All right. In order to get a free fall, it's strip, 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 one Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, strip, strip, one Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, strip, 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 short, quick strips, followed by a three, four Mississippi pause. If I don't get a hit, especially if I'm seeing fish on top, mm -hmm. if I see fish busting up and I'm not getting a hit on three Mississippi, I go to five Mississippi. And then I go on to, I'll be using a fly that sinks even more slowly because those fish are feeding just below the top of the water column, maybe the first, I don't know, two to four feet down under the surface. I need that fly to sink, but I want it to stay in that zone as long, in that strike zone, as long as possible. That's the whole ticket to being successful, keeping that bait in the strike zone the longest. Do you use your sonar, or how do you use your sonar on your boat? That's so, yeah, and you know, here's the thing with sonar. You know, all the sonar companies are making great machines today. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to preface this the way we talked about color. Any color on a fly is good as long as it's chartreuse. Mm -hmm. Any sonar on Lanier is good as long as it's a hummingbird. <laughs> I understand that. I, I've heard that before. Okay. So I got you. So, so in, in truth, truth be known, and I'm going to be honest about this, I think all the companies are making great sonars today. Mm -hmm. Okay? Everybody's got a great sonar. The game changer for me with hummingbird is their Lake Master chart. That has put more fish in my boat for reasons of the way I can set that chart up where every single hump on the lake, there are times of the year where the pattern is stripers are on humps, just like the bass get on humps, right? In mm -hmm. the summertime, the right. bass are on the humps. Stripers get on humps as well in, in the fall and in the spring. And I don't have to worry about where the hump is. That Lake Master chart points out every single hump on the lake. I'm driving down and looking at my GPS, and it's all blue. And I'm in the river channel, and all of a sudden, just off to the left, and I'm still a half a mile from shoreline anywhere on the left side. I'm a half a mile away. I'm in the middle of the lake. All of a sudden, I see a big old green blob. There's a hump there. That hummingbird picks it up for me, and I go, I didn't know there was a hump there. There's no marker, right? but there's a hump there. Mm -hmm. And I can, set my, I can set my hummingbird up to contour highlighting to denote every single hump on any lake in the southeast. And to me, that's a game changer. It just lets me figure out patterns and get around to fish. And then obviously, once you get on that hump, you just get on that hump and troll around it with your trolling motor trying to find the brush pile. And then I mark it when I'm over the brush pile. The hump is there. It shows it to me in green. But the minute I find that brush pile... I just found magic, and that's what I do to try and find fish subsurface. Okay, guys, there you go. That ought to be enough to get you started with a fly rod on Lake Lanier for Stripe Ray. I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Fish North Georgia podcast. If y'all have any topics or guests you'd like to see in the future, leave it in the comments below. Hit that subscribe button, click that bell, so that you'll be notified of any future videos. And don't forget to give us a follow on Facebook and Instagram at Fish North Georgia. And we look forward to seeing you soon.